Hello, wonderful person. This is Anton. And, you know, in my uh, previous experience as a teacher, I did a few conferences, I had to present a few times, and every conference I went to was, at least when you're a presenter, a little bit nerve-wracking. And so imagine a situation where you're about to present at a very, very important conference, and you're about to speak about your findings and how you were able to discover new things, and then you look outside and you realize there's a lot of snow. But you also get a phone call saying the conference has actually been cancelled. It's a snow day, right? Well, what do you do? I guess most people would probably feel a little bit relaxed, maybe go watch a movie or two, get a cup of coffee and kind of sleep in. Not this guy though. This guy decided that he wanted to continue his work and he looked over the numbers from his previous work and decided to analyze it again. And guess what? He discovered a new dwarf planet. This guy is Dr. Scott Shepard, who was previously known as a discoverer of several other objects, including very recently an object known as Far Out. The object that, according to him, uh, was the farthest object, thus it's called Far Out. Now, interestingly, he was about to talk about this object at this conference. And then when he was looking at his results, he actually realized there's another object even farther than this object. And so when the conference actually happened, he talked about this, but he was lost for words. He didn't really know what to say. Here was this dwarf planet that he discovered only a few months ago that was technically the farthest object we've ever found, and he just discovered a new one literally a day ago. And so he unofficially named it Far Far Out. Because what, what else would you name it, right? So that's essentially the discovery, and that's all we know about it as of today. He basically just discovered while looking at his notes right in between the snow day and the conference. Actually, we do know a few more things about it, so let me show it to you right here in Universe Sandbox. So first of all, um, well, here's Earth for comparison. You can kind of see it orbiting right there. Where uh, we need to go, though, is much, much farther away. This new object is at a distance of approximately 140 astronomical units away from Earth. And I think it's much easier to visualize all of this if I actually enable orbit. So you can actually kind of see some of this stuff. There is Neptune. This is at a distance of just under 40 AU, 40 astronomical units, so 40 times the distance of Earth to the Sun. The uh, orbit of Pluto should be this right here. And the orbit of far out, we don't really know yet, but we know that this is how far away it is. In other words, it, it is currently the farthest object we have. Now, it still doesn't mean that it's going to be always the farthest object, because objects like Sedna, for example, have such an eccentric orbit that at some point they will be really, really, really far away. But at this moment, as of 2019, far, far out, for the lack of better term for, for this object, is literally the most far away object we have right now. We don't really know much else about it. We don't even know its size. We don't know if it qualifies as a dwarf planet or just a very large asteroid-like rock, like, for example, Ultima Thule, or basically if it's a minor planet or if it's something else. All we know is that it's extremely dim, meaning that it's probably either really, really dark or maybe, just maybe, uh, extremely small. And this is literally at the limit of what we could actually see at this distance with current technology. And the funniest thing is that it's not even the object we're looking for. Dr. Scott Shepard and um, a team of other scientists is actually looking for Planet 9. The mysterious Planet 9 um, is still something that most people are mostly interested in. And um, in the last few weeks, actually, there were several studies from some of the major teams. Um, one of those studies uses a statistical analysis to try to prove that assuming that all of our observations of other objects, of, for example, orbit of Sedna, orbit of Aries and orbit of all of the other objects, including actually some of the planets in the solar system, are accidental, what would be the chance of that happening versus an actual object like Planet 9? And the chance of all of this being by accident is about 0.2%. In other words, there's about 99.8% chance that Planet 9 or something relatively massive is out there causing all of these effects. So that's kind of one good news. The other good news is that there's definitely a lot of new evidence to suggest that Planet 9 exists out there, um, and so these objects like Far Out and Far Far Out are just the sort of side effects of looking for Planet 9 and finding these incredible objects at a really, really far away distance. Now, there is, however, another paper that I mentioned previously in one of the videos that actually uses statistical analysis to try to find out if 
Maybe you don't need the Planet 9, but just a very, very large amount of these objects, like Far Far Out and Far Out and Sadman, Eris, and essentially other Kuiper Belt objects, all together forming a mass of about 10 masses of Earth. If you have enough of these objects, you could potentially actually not need the Planet 9, but instead have literally billions and, and billions of these asteroids all over the place here, influencing each other. So that's also a possibility still. And maybe in the next decade or so, we'll be able to find out what's the real answer. For now, I'm pretty sure we're going to be finding more of these objects, because we're predicting there's a few thousands of them out there, and most likely actually close to a million. And so we're going to find a lot more of them, and at some point we're going to run out of cool names for these objects. So we need a better system, because naming things far out, far far out is cool, but that joke only has like this much left in it. And well, anyway, unfortunately that's really all I have to say for now. So the Planet 9 search has not finished, we're still kind of looking for it. We've discovered a really, really far away object. And um, as of today, we don't really exactly 100% know what's really happening. Is it the gravity of Kuiper Belt, or is it the gravity of a massive planet hiding out there? I hope it's a planet, of course, but you know what? Sometimes the most dramatic answer is not the best. For all we know, it could be just a lot of these objects. And if so, I propose to name one of them after me, one of them after you, and one of them a wonderful planet, because that just sounds so cool. Anyway, on that note, thank you for watching, come back tomorrow to learn something else, something hopefully I'll have more to say about, and space out, and as always, bye-bye. And if you haven't subscribed, or if you didn't like this video, like it, why didn't you like it? It's, it's, it's a good video, isn't it? I tried to make it my best, but there was so little I could say, there's literally just nothing you can say about this object yet. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow.